You are listening to Soul Cafe Radio, your online escape to the everyday. Now here is our host, the Word Master. Radio. This is our podcast for Friday, September 18, 2015. What a week it has been. As a friend of mine commented yesterday, the week went by really fast, but we thank God. And those of you who have gone through a week where it was filled with trials and tribulations, yet you made it through, you can testify to the goodness of God. Today, in our talk, we're looking at an ever-deepening death to self. Our verse of the day comes to us from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, which reads, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. Thank you, dear God, for allowing us the opportunity to meet like this once more. And as we get into your word today, we ask you that the enlightenment will come from your Holy Spirit and not from any man, that the blessings may come from heaven and not from here below. Lord, speak to our hearts today. Give encouragement and hope and strength to your people 
as we deliberate on these matters today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'd like to share with you an item from ChristianHeadlines.com, which I think very interesting in a lot of current events in our world history. You know, one of the things that we see happening is that these churches are united, different congregations putting aside their creeds and their bylaws and their constitutions and their church governance to come together to agree. And we see at least that there are still people in this world who are seeking for the old past and asking for the old ways. And so from ChristianHeadlines.com 100 year old women banned from church for criticizing pastors preaching style. It says 103 year old woman who has been attending the same church for nearly a century wow, was recently banned from the church. Janora Ham Biggs has been attending Union Grove Baptist Church in Georgia since she was 11, Fox News reports. She says she is very committed to the church. She even served as the church's secretary for about 40 years. Biggs takes issue with Reverend Tim Maddox's preaching style, however, and she is not afraid to confront him about it. At one point, he had a crew in here and they were hollering and falling out in the middle of the floor. Biggs stated, we don't do that in the Baptist church. Biggs accused Reverend Maddox of preaching and conducting church services in a holiness style. Due to her criticism, Maddox sent Biggs a letter telling her she was no longer allowed to attend Union Grove for any reason whatsoever. The letter is to inform you that according to the bylaws of the Union Grove Baptist Church and by vote of the active members, any membership or associations that you have had with this church are now officially revoked, the letter stated. Biggs, however, says she has no intention of not attending the church that has been her place of worship for decades. This is my church. I love this church, and he cannot stop me from going, Biggs stated. Awesome testimony in light of the fact that not only has this happened to many of us, but it will continue to happen until the close of time. Those who oppose and stand up for what's going on in these last days will be ridiculed, will be maligned, will be mistreated. But you know what, my friends? As true as it was yesterday, it is still true today that God is still working it out for us. Is it worth 
now surrounds me A failing heart is all I see Broken dreams with painful memories The quest for help abides with me Still I know you're standing near me But I so need your hand in mine So Lord I ask you presents today. So Father, speak through me, speak to me, speak for me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 7 through 14, the Bible reads, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. For if he live after the flesh, he shall die. But if he through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, he shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As we begin this morning, I just want to lay the framework of the thought. You know, today many people are raised up, Christians I'm talking about, believing that we can never be perfect, but we just keep striving to be. The Bible here tells us that no, that is a lie. And from the heart is not just from any heart, it is from the heart of God. And he will not lie to you, and his word declares that we are not just going to be striving continually, endlessly, but we'll come to a point where we are walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. Even though that there will continue to be a struggle between the Spirit and the flesh, there will come a point when the flesh no longer conquers the spirit, the mind. But because modern day preachers and teachers want people to keep on coming to them, depending upon them, they continue to perpetuate such lies. In fact, we read in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3, Paul declared to Timothy 
the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall turn unto fables. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three. The apostle does not here refer to the openly irreligious, but to the professing Christians who make inclination their guide and thus become enslaved by self. Such are willing to listen to those doctrines only that do not rebuke their sins or condemn their pleasure-loving course. They are offended by the plain words of the faithful servants of Christ and choose teachers who praise and flatter them. And, here we go, and among professing ministers, there are those who preach the opinions of men instead of the word of God. Unfaithful to their trust, they lead astray those who look to them for spiritual guidance. So why is it so important that we preach that we can overcome sin? In fact, we must overcome sin. Why is it important? Because, my friend, the heart of the gospel is that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners, not in sin, but from their sins, from our sins. And so if at the heart of the gospel, if the mission of Christ is to save sinners from sin, then why do preachers continue to tell their people that yes, they can continue living in sin, that grace covers it all? Like I said, it's all carefully orchestrated so that they can keep on getting their money, your money, my money. It's all this about, my friends, but today I want to bring this message to you so that you can know that there is indeed a fight that is on a fight that, at the end of it all, will eventually lead to the eradication of every love that you and I have for self. And no matter the preacher, no matter the teacher, when the Spirit of God gets a hold of us and gives us this understanding, no matter what they say, it will not hold sway because we will know the truth, and the truth indeed will set us free. The law obeyed leads men to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus 2.12 Not in the future, but right now. We must be this way right now. Titus 2.12 But the enemy of all righteousness has taken the world captive, and has led men and women to disobey the law. As Paul foresaw, multitudes have turned from the plain searching truths of God's word, and have chosen teachers who present to them the fables they desire. Many among both ministers and people are trampling under their feet the commandments of God. Thus the creator of the world is insulted, and Satan laughs in triumph at the success of his devices. Notice in wanting to promote that God's grace covers, that God has done away with the law and etc etc just to make it seem that all those things that were supposed to be quote unquote Old Testament are no longer valid and binding when you do away with the law of God mankind will eventually do away with the laws of man themselves and you have an immoral uncivilized society and that's the result, and that's why Satan is laughing. Because no one wants to die to self. Everyone wants to live for self, live to self, live selfishly. And so, when someone comes with a message that there needs to be an ever deepening debt to self, it's, me, it's met with resistance. Human beings themselves, given to evil, are prone to deal untenderly with the tempted and the errant. They cannot read the heart. They know not its struggle and its pain. Of the rebuke that is love, of the blow that wounds to heal, of the war, of the warning that speaks hope, they have need to learn. Ah, my friends, see, that's the end result. We become so used to ourselves, used to promoting ourselves, that we can't see past ourselves. And when someone is hurting, even though we genuinely want to give them encouragement and hope, 
because we are so consumed with our own thoughts and opinions, that's what we need. That's what we transfer. Because you cannot give others what you yourself don't have. And by the grace of God, by the end of this presentation today, some one of us will say, I don't want to live this way anymore. If Christ is in you, the hope of glory, you will have no disposition to watch others, to expose their errors. Instead of seeking to accuse and condemn, it will be your object to help to bless and to save. In dealing with those who are in error, you will heed the injunction, Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Galatians 6.1 You will call to mind the many times you have erred and how hard it was to find the right way when you had once left it. You will not push your brother into greater darkness, but with a heart full of pity will tell him of his danger. He who looks often upon the cross of Calvary, remembering that his sins placed the Savior there, will never try to estimate the degree of his guilt in comparison with that of others. He will not climb upon the judgment seat to bring accusation against another. There can be no spirit of criticism or self-exaltation on the part of those who walk in the shadow of Calvary's cross. And this does not come by accident, by chance, by circumstance. It does not come with us constantly hearing, Oh, all you have to do is keep on striving. That there will never come a point when you will be sinless, when you will not stop sin. My friends, you see what those lies produce? Not only does it breed negativity in us, it also causes us to transfer that negativity to others because we have not allowed the spirit to cut down every defect of character that's within us. It continues to rise up and to block our view of others. And so therefore, when someone is hurting and in pain and their soul is in anguish, the words that you seek to use to heal do more harm than good. And even though we are called, as we just saw, to be people who are not afraid to rebuke sin, yet let us not be a people who seek to repulse the sinner. Take note. Not until you feel that you could sacrifice your own self-dignity and even lay down your life in order to save an erring brother have you cast a beam out of your own eye so that you are prepared to help your brother. Then you can approach him and touch his heart. No one has ever been reclaimed from a wrong position by censure and reproach, but many have thus been driven from Christ and led to seal their hearts against conviction. A tender spirit, a gentle winning deportment may save the erring and hide a multitude of sin. I want to make this crystal clear to our minds, beloved listener. There's a place for rebuke. It's rebuking of the sin. And like I said, it's not the repulsion of the sinner. And therefore, we have a work to do in going into our prayer closets and not coming out until we know for sure that the words of Scripture have been fulfilled. Ask God to let the words of your mouth be acceptable, not just in His sight, but acceptable to the hearer. Because, as the Apostle Paul says, we need to have our words seasoned with grace, that it could be like salt, savoring to the individual ear. We want to help and not heal. We want to construct and not destruct. Going forward in this Christian walk, dear listener, may be a studied aim to understand the minds of men, to reach out to your brother or sister, and to love them, most importantly. The revelation of Christ in your own character will have a transforming power upon all with whom you come in contact. Let Christ be daily made manifest in you, and he will reveal through you the creative energy of his word. 
a gentle persuasive yet mighty influence to recreate other souls in the beauty of the Lord our God. At the end of the day, that is exactly what God is looking for, the reproduction of his character in the world, the reproduction of his character manifested through his people into the world. And as you and I come down to the closing hours of earth's history, let us not seek to stand on the side where self is and it's all about me, myself, and I. Let us ever, ever seek to die to self, to overcome every selfish trait of character. And the only way that we can do this is by keeping our eyes on Christ, always seeking to progress, always seeking to have the mindset of Moses where it is recorded in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 24 to 26. Notice Moses' mindset. It says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Notice 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Notice how Moses' life was prior to his flight from Egypt. He was in ease and comfort, sure enough. He was the prince of Egypt. He was in line to become Pharaoh. He was so being groomed to take over that mighty empire. He was full of self, my brothers and sisters. And God had to take those 40 years of training prior and give him 40 years of new training on the school of Christ. And you know when you enroll in the school of Christ, it is through trials and tribulations and afflictions. And so we know that Moses on the backside of Midian at the mountains training the sheep and caring for his father-in-law's flocks. You know he had a rough go of it. He didn't have any servants to say, you do this, you do that, I command you. He had to do it himself, beloved. And so he had to learn patience. He had to learn all the Christian graces that we're learning today. Because God would be calling him for the last 40 years of his life to lead his sheep. And he must have a heart, a heart after God that will tenderly yet persuasively lead the children of Israel. And so he forsook all that he knew of self, even bearing the reproach of those whom he was called to help to deliver, being stoned at one point. My friends, as we close out today, Notice these words that we alluded to earlier. There can be no growth or fruitfulness in the life that is centered in self. If you have accepted Christ as a personal Savior, you ought to forget yourself and to try to help others. Talk of the love of Christ. Tell of His goodness. Do every duty that presents itself. Carry the burden of souls upon your heart and by every means in your power Seek to save the lost. As you receive the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of unselfish love and labor for others, you will grow and bring forth fruit. The grace of the Spirit will ripen in your character. Your faith will increase. Your convictions deepen. Your love be made perfect. More and more you will reflect the likeness of Christ in all that is pure, noble, and lovely. And our closing thought. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Galatians 5 22 to 23. This fruit can never perish, but will produce after its kind a harvest unto eternal life. When the fruit is born forth, when the fruit is brought forth, Immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come.
Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. Beloved, we have much work to do. And I don't mean the kind where you roll up your sleeves and muscle up and push the wheelbarrow and pull the plow and by the sweat of your brow earn it. I mean, on chafed knees, on tear caked cheeks. That's how this work will be done. In prayer, my friends, we need to wrestle with God like Jacob did. Notice what you just heard. We need to forget about ourselves so that we can be good for others. And you'll understand that in context. It is important for you to understand who you are. But my friends, never forget the balance that you are not supposed to think of yourself more highly than your art. Remember that. But also remember that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And therefore, when you think that you're doing your level best, there's more work to be done. And so the takeaway today is, beloved, don't settle for yesterday's victories. Don't settle for the promise of today. Ever deeper, let it be your desire to go down to the depths of all that Jesus wants you to be. May it be your desire to please him, not just in some things, but in all things. He says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. It's not a call for you to do it. Obviously not. We can't do it. But the word of God tells us, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. That is not we who are doing it, but God who is working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We are told that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. But we must let him. And that's what those prayers are about. Because self will not give up without a struggle. And we need to pray and ask God to help us to let go of self. Because as long as we hold on to our pride and our arrogance and our self-centeredness, we won't want Jesus. No, not at all. Until we come to the place where we realize that we need to be humble and teachable, we won't realize that we're sinners in need of being saved by His grace. We will not. And so today, upon the authority of the Lord Jesus, I charge you to live in victory every day. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for speaking to our hearts. We ask you to come again into our experience this day. May we be more like you each and every day, dear Savior. Do for us that which we know that we cannot do for ourselves. And when our heart is overwhelmed, lead us to the rock that is higher than I. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
That's Friday evening, September 18, 2015. I'm inviting you to tune in to a very special Bible study, unlike any that you've probably heard. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can listen in right here on Soul Cafe Radio. Go to our website at soulcafeonline.com/radio and bookmark the page. Because you need to go from there to listen to our presentation online, or you can call in to the conference line number, which is area code seven one two four three two one six eight zero seven one two four three two one six eight zero. For more information, please visit our website at soulcafeonline dot com. The study is entitled. Rewiring the circuit of the mind. Rewiring the circuit of the mind. How we can stop listening to the words of the prince of lies. You have been listening to Soul Cafe Radio. Join us next time for power music, messages, and more. Remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.com. Against her, how she felt so. Warm.